Hi and welcome back. Today we are going to do a summary for grade 10 regarding all the exponential laws that you have learned. When you start you must be familiar with the basic rules that you have learned in grade 9. The first rule you would have learned would be a to the power of m times a to the power of n is equal to a m plus n. Okay, the second rule we have is a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a m minus n. Then we have a to the power of m in brackets and out of brackets n. This gives us a m times n. Now notice the difference between when I add the powers and when I multiply the powers. Then we have a b to the power of m. It becomes a to the power of m b to the power of m. Remembering that the m goes to every term in the bracket. Alright, now what you must also remember is that these two rules usually work hand in hand. So when you have an m or a power outside, it must go to every piece inside. But also that if the inside term has a power, the relationship must multiply. So if I gave you a to the power 2 times b and outside to the power of 3, then the 3 goes to the a to the power 2 and it goes to the b. But we have a 2 times 3 and b to the power of 3. So it's a to the power of 6, b to the power of 3. So we have a to the power of 6, b to the power of 3. Then we have the rule of an exponent with a fraction. Right. The rule is if ever you are moving any number or any unknown with an exponent from its original place in the fraction. So if it is at the bottom you are moving it to the top or if it is at the top you are moving it to the bottom then the power of the exponent changes not the term the power so it moves from m to minus m the last rule we have is anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1 now being comfortable with these rules you have to realize the styles they're going to ask the first one is where you only have multiplication and division in the question take for example 4 to the power of x minus 1 times 8 to the power of x plus 1 all over 32 to the power of x minus 1. Now in exponents, the heart of exponents is prime numbers. So first we are going to break down the 4, the 8 and the 32 into prime numbers. Giving us 2 to the power of 2 x minus 1 times 2 to the power of 3 x plus 4. Notice that I am keeping the brackets. I am not getting rid of the brackets. All over 2 to the power of 5 x minus 1. Now the reason you keep your brackets is because the 2 inside must multiply with the x and the minus 1. If you just write it as 2 to the power 2x minus 1. What happens is you forget to multiply it with the 1 also. The actual answer is 2 to the power of 2x minus 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Let's do that with the next bracket. 2 to the power of 3x plus 3 all over 2 to the power of 5x minus 5. Now let's look at which rule we applied here. The rule that we used here is the rule that states that when we have an exponent in a bracket we multiply the powers and that's what we did here. We multiplied. Now we are going to join it. It has the same base so we're going to take 2 as our base. When they are multiplying we are using this rule, the first rule then we are going to add their powers. So I'm going to have 2x 
minus 2 plus 3x plus 3. I added the 2 on top that were multiplying. But what happens when it is dividing? I'm going to say the top and I'm going to subtract the bottom. So that means I'm going to change the signs of the bottom exponents, giving me minus 5x plus 5. Notice it was a minus here. If I change the signs, it becomes plus. My final answer is 2 to the power of, now that's total, 2x plus 3x is 5x minus 5x, giving me 0. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1 plus 5, 6. So it's 2 to the power of 6. That would equal to 64. Right, the next style of question is where you have plus or minus in the question. Now, you must notice in the previous question, the relationship between every term was multiplication. There was no plus or minus between them. Whereas in now, there will be a plus and minus. Okay, if we have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 2, all over 3 to the power of x minus 1 plus 3 to the power of x. You will notice that there are pluses between the terms which is different from the previous question where there was no plus or minus between the terms. Now when we're doing the sum you also have to see that its prime numbers exponents revolve around prime numbers. In this case, it's already broken down to 3, so we're already in prime numbers. What we're going to do now is we're going to separate, which means 3 to the power of x can stay the same. But what we're going to do with the next term is for every power, we are going to put a base. So I would have had 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 2. I've separated them. All over, again, we've got two powers, so we're going to put base to each power. So I have 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of minus 1 plus 3 to the power of x. Now, because it has pluses and minuses, I'm going to factorize. If I look at each term, I will see a common. In the top, I have 3 to the power of x that is common, leaving me with 1 plus 3 to the power of 2, all over, at the bottom in each term again, I have 3 to the power of x that is common, leaving me with 3 to the power of minus 1 plus 1. Now you can cancel 3 to the power x. If you now no longer have an unknown in the question, you can use the calculator. There's no need to show that 3 squared is 9, 3 to the power minus 1 is 1 over 3. Your final answer is 7 and a half. From this step to the answer, there is no other mark allocation. So it's no use expanding on the answer and wasting time in your exam. Right. The next question is where we are solving for x, but x is a power. Right. When we're solving for x, the general rule is to get the x alone. Now, because the x is attached to the 27, we have to get rid only of the 4. The relationship is multiplication, so I'm dividing. So I have 27 to the power of x is equal to 3. Now again, I'm emphasizing prime numbers are important in exponents. So in this case, I'm going to change 27 to 3 to the power of 3. Remember to keep it in a bracket because now when you get rid of the brackets, you get 3 to the power of 3x. In this case, had you not put in the bracket, you would have still got the same answer. But it is when the powers are two terms that you start being callous. So we don't start forming bad habits. You put the brackets when you break down a number and then you get rid of the brackets. Now once the bases are the same, I can cancel them. When there is no power, it is accepted as 1. So we now have 3x is equal to 1 
x is equal to 1 over 3. The last step we have is where x is the base. So, we have x to the power of 1 over 3 is equal to 27. Again, prime numbers are important. So, we break down 27 to 3 to the power of 3. We then cross multiply with the opposite when I say we cross multiply with opposite, we are always going to look at the unknown because our aim is to get the unknown alone. We then, what we do on the one side, we do on the other side. This gives me x alone is equal to 3 to the power of 9. Thank you for watching.